Good morning guys. We're camped out in a little bit of a different kind of spot tonight or this morning, which we camped in last night. We're in uh, a spare parts area, basically in the backyard of direct off road in Bakersfield, California, which is a home of HD shocks. So we purchased our shocks that were valve, they're king shocks done by HD shocks for this truck from HD shocks and we were kind of in the air so we thought we'd stop by I'd really like to get the front leaf springs they have for this not quite in the budget right now but the Jeep needs a lot of things too I could just go to town here they got so much cool stuff but uh, we're gonna go a little bit by bit we're gonna take off these Skyjacker shocks which are new and I think they're they they're you know not very used they work fine as far as those shocks do but we're gonna set put a set of Bilstein shocks on there which are supposedly the smoothest ride for this application and take these shocks off these are really harsh on the bumps so hoping I'll cross my fingers hoping we get a little bit of a more plush ride on the Jeep these guys were great they're super accommodating they didn't have the shocks in stock they got them overnight so we slept here last night they're gonna throw them on this morning so get us right in so this is what it looks like from the front let's go inside and see what it looks like on the inside morning. good morning here's oh, the key perfect i'll uh, get it going for you Just like that, I didn't even see them bring it in. We got shiny new Bilstein shocks. Nice. These are the springs that I would like for the front of the V. It's a little pricey right now. The problem is the Canadian dollar. Like a dollar US is like a dollar forty Canadian. So really amplifies the price all right new shocks are on we're going for a test drive fingers crossed we get a smoother ride no more feeling pukey driving hopefully <laughs> this jeep makes me so car sick i don't know if it's a combination of the small windshield and the moving around or what but yeah i kind of feel a little wheezy in it sometimes too Oh, yeah. I didn't dance Street. Feels like you don't get that harsh thing on the before every crack in the pavement was bunk, bunk. Or and it would dance. Oh, it's still gonna dance. The suspension geometry <laughs> sucks. That's gonna get fixed next summer. I think that's the part that makes me sick. I think it's Maybe. that you know, what'd you call it? Bump steer. Bump steer. Yeah. yeah. It goes like this lots in the back. Yeah, the lift, lift, it's not a very high quality lift and the geometry isn't perfect. And it bump steers on the back even more than the front, which usually you get bump steer on the front. The back kind of goes sideways as it goes up and down. So I got to do some changes to the suspension. But it was uh, really hitting the bumps hard with those stock shocks. Like you really notice it just on cracks in the pavement, which, you know, when we're driving on a bumpy road off road, yeah, it's like way better. He's purposely hitting bumps. <laughs> yeah. You don't get that jar. Okay, good. Cause that was a lot of money. <laughs> so when we rolled in here to uh, direct off road and HD shocks store, I had noticed the day or two before that our blue ox hitch the toes our jeep where the receiver connects to the this swivel on the hitch this aluminum bracket the holes had were starting to open up 
So it was getting pretty loose in there and the bolt was moving back and forth. The nut was actually worn into the side of this bracket and it had taken maybe a third of the material away. So it was losing strength and moving. And you know, I had concerns of it eventually breaking. So I wanted to get that done before it got too bad. So I just wanted to ask these guys if they could point me in the right direction to a good welding shop that could just run a bead around there, put the hole back to original size and smooth it out. Not a big deal. I don't have my aluminum welder with me though. So it wasn't something I could do myself on the road. Pat here, the owner said, oh no, you want to go, you want to go to my buddy's machine shop and he'll fix it up right. And so <laughs> Pat took it on himself to take this piece over there and get them to machine insert bushings. So we're back to the original size bolt hole. We have probably twice the surface area for the bolt to put force into. It's back, it's, and he even got a, found a bolt that's a little bit longer because the original bolt, the, the flat basically ran out before it got into the, uh, into the bracket. So that's not the best because you're uh, a little smaller diameter where the threads are. You don't have the surface area in there. So it made it this side wear even more. Yeah. So Pat got a bolt that has a flat that goes pretty much right through. We got way more area there. We're back to better than new probably. So thanks for getting that done, Pat. Much appreciated. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And we're back on the road. So Pat promised us an interview this morning. Let's go see if we can find him. He's a pretty busy guy and he's always on the phone. <sighs> morning, Daniel. Morning, good morning. Is Pat uh, around somewhere? He's not in the back there. Yeah, he's, uh, let me go get home for you. So we're here at Direct Off Road in HD Shocks. Pat, the owner, agreed to give us an interview. I first ran across Pat at the Quartzsite RV show in uh, Quartzsite, Arizona last year. And I came in asking about shock applications. Like he had a pretty nice booth there with some cool shocks on display. And I thought, well, you never know. You might know something about putting shocks on a Kodiak to make it ride better. He knew a lot about it actually. And he was very open to sharing his knowledge. And it seems like now that I'm here at the direct off road and HD shock store, Everybody's the same. They're all here to help you and share their information and just get you where you need to be. So we got a set of shocks shipped to us from Pat in the summer to put on our Kodiak, which made a huge improvement. And now that we're coming down this way, we stopped by to get some shocks on our Jeep too from the direct off-road guys here. Pat, maybe tell us a little bit about a direct off-road HD shocks, how it all came to be and uh, what's going on? Well, I guess the the short version is, is my dad had a shop since the late 60s, so I grew up in the industry. So that's enabled us to get to this level of direct off-road. And over the years, you just keep learning and educating yourself with experience. And then next thing you know, we just develop, I think, direct off-road as an ability to not only just sell parts to people, but actually understand what parts they truly need for their application. Years ago, I had a Kodiak C4500 and had my first kind of taste at developing a shock for that application. Going off-road with big medium duty trucks is just not probably what they were built for, but us aftermarket, I guess we know that we can do anything. So yeah, I, had, possible. I had four Ds <laughs> on it and super singles. So we were able to go into the sand and go in the dunes better, hauling our trailers. So that's kind of like my experience, like long-term with the shock package like you have. Fast forward to 2021, we had got a class A motorhome and ended up developing a shock for that application. So the guys at King Shocks basically are manufacturing our own version of a shock for many applications now. So we have applications from class A motorhomes, super C's, all the way down to three quarter ton trucks. So what makes it, I guess, even more unique and 
is we're developing a shock that has tuning specific for service trucks, people that have in-bed campers or who haul heavy weight all the time. That application, like we have valving that addresses kind of the sway and stability. So as you're driving down the highway, a stock shock is usually pretty soft and there's no control. So we usually elevate the rebound so you get a lot more slower response. It ends up on some of these applications even being better in the, as far as sway. Let's take a walk over to the wall of shocks and uh, see some pretty sweet product. <clears throat> so I'll let you uh, demonstrate this. So this is like a brand new. So this off, is something like you'd have on an RV, like uh, off the shelf. It's just a, a normal gas standard shock that you would see on an application. Takes a long time. Yeah, so there's not much pressure in that, that shock. So as you see that, it, it kind of like allows the vehicle to, over time, like semis notice that they start getting a lot of wheel hop and it ends up cupping up the tires. So now we develop this. So we have upwards of 200 to 250 PSI of nitrogen. And as you can see, there's a lot more oh, force. It takes a little more, but then it moves nice and smooth. Right. Yeah. So that recovery rate kind of helps yeah, hold the back. shock. Very controlled and gets back to where it needs to be to do the next bump, right? Right, and then push that one. Yeah. You'll see it'll recover faster. <laughs> I know for our vehicle, it just saved a whole bunch of us moving. Right. There's a lot of less of this, right? It just kind of... Right, Took and it, it all helps kind of yeah. settle in. So like, this is like our 2.5 shock, which is similar to what you guys have, except for it has the pin top on bottom. This is our 3.0. So we use this on applications that we can fit that larger shock on. Semi trucks, cab shocks. This we develop for semis with custom air ride. So we have this for many applications and tuning. And then this is a steering stabilizer that we'll use for a diff lot of different applications as well. And this is kind of like the bigger version of your shock, which is our 3.0. And then this one is like for our 25 and 3500 Chevys. And then this shock kind of application will fit everything from like your basic three quarter ton truck all the way up to semis with, and we have all these different in configurations to fit all these different applications. I think now we have over like 85 part numbers and it keeps growing like every week. So it's so many vehicles to make better. Right, yeah, <laughs> like even transportation companies with the, their school buses, like we have shocks on mining vehicles and we even have shocks on vehicles like at Universal Studios, the trolleys and stuff. So they're stabilizing pretty much everything that we could put a shock on. Well, it seems like an expensive thing to do to buy shocks that are a lot more money than a generic shock. Right. But if you think about the protection you're giving your vehicle, because you're not doing all that, you know, you're absorbing shock. Right. Especially in an RV where you have all this cabinetry and stuff and those screws are just coming loose all the time if you're not absorbing that shock. Over, I would say the course of long-term, the wear and tear that a vehicle saves, you know, with our shocks on there, has to pay, pay the consumer back oh, uh, dividends, even with tire wear. So we have some semis on the road right now with over 200, 300,000 miles on the same shock, which a standard shock, they maybe get 30 to 60,000 miles out of. So tire wear for the semi truck owners is a big thing. And obviously driver comfort, people in, in customers and like in your space, it's more about the control. And then when you go off road, you kind of get that stability because when you're going in different off rough terrain, you get a lot of that side to side movement. And I would say our shocks help reduce that greatly. And even on turns and approaches, you'll probably see a lot less body roll as well. Those little ones? I was just nice gonna say, 
Marianne's going to spy this little one oh, and want it on her air ride seat because hers moves more than mine. I think her shock's on the way out. Right. So, she's so we'll have to do an adaptation <laughs> of uh, a mini shock for... Thanks, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it would look pretty cool sitting there on the seat too. <laughs> right. So I think there's a lot of different ways that we can help people. And it's like the more that we start understanding like how we can help people across the board with no matter almost what the application is, like we're able to fit a shock in most applications and I would say solve problems that people don't know that they have. Much like a work truck, everybody just thinks that, that hey, this work truck just gonna ride rough. Our, a lot of our applications is like just single-handedly just putting our shock package on there. There's companies now buying our shocks because how rough or firm the vehicle is. And then driver comfort, so driver less driver fatigue. So as you're putting eight or 10 hours behind the wheel, that's got to save in wear and tear on your body Huge. as well as your vehicle. So mm -hmm. we have trucking companies seeing that as a, a good investment because they're trying to help obviously their drivers. So those companies are seeing like less wear and tear on even like, like you, like you mentioned, like when you're driving down the highway and you're hitting those rough sections of road, it was like, where is that transferring into something breaking down on your vehicle, well, yeah, radiator you're, mounts. You're or feeling whatever. those impacts, your whole vehicle is, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say where you guys see the most is, you know, on those uneven road surfaces or even probably when you're driving off road, you get a lot of less side to side movement, right? Yeah, I, I think so. And yeah, and like I was saying, that constant movement down the highway, it really soaks that up. And the like the bridge, all the bridges, a lot of them would seem to have these big boot bumps and right. we'd get tossed. You know, so it's eliminated <laughs> a lot of that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think that as we continue to grow HD shocks, the guys at Direct Off-Road, we're able to kind of like be that facility here in California to be able to address many applications. And then we have quite the facility to be able to do installs, lift motor homes. So we can kind of help anybody and even well, people that are traveling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, shocks are, are under recognized by people. Like people put all, buy a new vehicle and they put all these things on them. And my advice is always spend your money on shocks first. Right. And then do all that other stuff because shocks make such a difference all around. Yeah. I say it's the best first place to start. If you have control or handling issues with your vehicle or application, at least try to look at the shocks, no matter what it is, car, truck, or semi, that's overlooked, like you much said. You know, it's just a $100 shock isn't gonna do what a $500 shock does. And it's not just $500 because it looks better. It's a rebuildable shock. So that's the other thing that's nice about our shocks are, is as you get to the level of if a shock decides to start leaking, O-ring or something goes bad, we can address it and rebuild it. So a lot of people like will hold on to a factory shock or I have some customers that are like, hey, I don't wanna drive my truck with the factory shocks anymore, so get me another set of your shocks. And then when the time comes and I want to you know, rebuild them, I'll have an extra set of, you know, it's kind of like much like air filters that are serviceable. Some people have two so they can rotate them out, you know, so they don't have to wait for it to dry or whatever. So I think it goes across the board. What kind of a service, like, is there a generic service interval that you go by for shocks? I know like with my experience in the snowmobile industry is, you know, you want to rebuild your shocks every year or two, really, because you're in harsh conditions and freezing and so on. And most people don't ever do it and they wait too long. They get moisture in the shock, it rusts the insides and it's garbage. Right. So like, is there a time mileage wise or age wise that you think you should send a shock out to get you to- Typically to in the off-road world, it's like guys that are, let's say, racing the Baja 1000. They're rebuilding their shock every, every race. Every, every race. <laughs> so it's, it's not typical drivability. Typical, let's say, 
coil over shock that King may have. You, it, just, it really goes down to how you're using it. So if you're just driving on the highway, which 90% of our shocks are, I would say it's until that shock starts leaking, then the serviceability of it, like right now I have a guy that's pushing the limit. So he has 300,000 miles on the same shock that's still on the road. So that is almost unheard of in this day and age, but the guys and we've developed at King Shocks a new oil formulation to withstand higher heat. And so it's that longevity. And because these shocks are and have an IFP, which is the internal floating piston, that nitrogen pressure is holding that shock pressure, the oil. So we don't see a lot of aeration in the oil, so that keeps the oil cleaner. So that's kind of pushing our, our limits. So can I say, hey, maybe 200,000 miles on a typical on-road vehicle, is that a true surface, like, statement of serviceability? It's, just, it's kind of like we're still, I'm going to say on our end, pushing the limit of understanding all of that. Rule of thumb, I would say 200,000 miles is probably a, a good statement of saying that you should service your shots. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, and like you say, it's not like, you know, in the, in the racing industry where you're hitting the full travel of that shock multiple times every right. second. <laughs> most, you know, where would the, the failures come from overheating? Most, most, I would say most vehicles travel maybe four inches from compression to rebound to extension on a, a normal driving like application on the street. Now you get off road and you're like you said, you're cycling the suspension a lot going down like washboard roads. Now that suspension is moving a lot more creating heat. So, but yeah. I would say very, very long life. The long life, and then I would say the control or the benefits. So, which is better? Do you want to just go and replace an a inexpensive shock and have to deal with the ride and handling? Well, yeah, or do you like want a, to invest? It's a double in bonus, right? right? Yeah. Put so, the money up front because you're going to spend it all in the end anyway, really, I think. You know, long term, it's it. just better. Yeah. So, yeah. I think we're here to help help people like yourself and others know that their RV doesn't have to drive that way. And we're putting that shock packages on these RVs and the feedback is unreal. Uh, how much people wouldn't have guessed that putting four or six shocks on an application, how much better it handles. Well, I know there's people that are gonna watch this and say, my RV drives just fine. Trust me, get the shocks. <laughs> You'll notice the difference. Well, that's, that's, that's what happens is people just assume that because of that application, that's how they drive. So like as you're driving down the road, you get some of this side to side. That's what on my motorhome, I noticed a lot. It just felt wallowy. Yeah, just yeah. kind of like some people call it oscillating. And then you get the porpoising, right? So you get over those bridge transitions and or rough sections of road. And then the front end's just sitting there kind of bouncing. Well, now ours has less body roll more controlled and then the recovery rate is like it compresses and it comes back it doesn't just keep keep bouncing so a lot of people just assume that it's a big truck or it's a motorhome and this is just kind of how it drives now we're just developing i would say like a a sport or performance suspension for those applications to where now you could drive longer on the highway getting to a destination because you're comfortable so i would say that that feedback in that i would say you got less if you're getting the stuff beat out of you driving down the road you're going to get tired but if you're comfortable like you just well, keep driving yeah. the whole idea is to enjoy the trip or enjoy the trip right so, right yeah. that's our that's our yeah. passion right enjoy the drive ahead <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for giving us all the no info problem. Yeah, and appreciate you guys out with swing the good by. products. And uh, we'll put the in the description of the video. We'll put the contact information for HD Shocks Direct Off Road. If anybody needs anything for their RV suspension wise to improve things, give Pat a shout. 
see if he has uh, something for your application. And if you want to fix up your off-road Jeep or uh, whatever vehicle, uh, check out these guys at Direct Off-Road. They got all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> Those shocks are awesome. Oh. I purposely drove over big rocks and threw whoops and things so like that. So it's better than it was? Oh, cool. <laughs> like you can't even compare it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Thanks, like, Direct Off-Road. Yeah. Good advice. That was like wicked. Yeah, that was really good. Right on. Do it again. We left our campsite and drove about a mile and I just realized our GoPro's normally right here and it's not there. And I had it before we left. Not good. I think I set it on the Jeep. Oh man, it's still there. We drove about a mile down this rocky road. I guess those new Bilstein shocks that uh, direct off road installed work good. Sweet. I was expecting to have to drive back a mile with the Jeep and find a ran over camera.